What's up everyone? Welcome to another round of Young Seven Yang gameplay reviews. Uh, today we're going to be doing a gameplay commentary, or kind of a gameplay commentary of an old, very old game actually. This game was released in 1985. Uh, this game is known as Road Blaster. It was released on the Sega CD console um, soon after, oh, I wouldn't say soon after, but a while after. And renamed uh, Road Avenger in the United States. And it also had a cool theme song to go along with it. Anyway, this is the PlayStation 1 re release of the same game, of the arcade version of it, called Road Blaster. So the, the beginning theme song is a bit different from the actual arcade song. Now, um, most of you are familiar with the uh, games today that have all these QT events. So this is where the QT events derive from. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with the QT type games, uh, such as Dragon's Lair or Space Ace, well this came out well before the both of those two games and uh, this was a Japanese game that was extremely popular and had a huge uh, influence, had, influ had a huge influence from a movie called Mad Max, if any of you are familiar with that movie, I mean most of you who are as old as me should know what I'm talking about, but the younger generation might be a little bit lost when I say the word Mad Max. In uh, particularly, the original Mad Max film are you could also relate it to the world, to the to the Mad Max Part Two film, Road Warrior. And the reason I say that is because the main character in this game loses his family in a similar way, and uses his really cool car to get revenge on all those who killed his family members. You know, his wife and his child, or not his wife and his child, but his wife. Anyway, um, the uh, game itself is completely hand-drawn anime-type game, which for its time was phenomenal because um, basically video games back then you know were all squares and things and anytime you can really interact with something people really enjoyed it and you know basically in this game it's a, it's one giant QT and every time you make a mistake you die there's no ifs ands and buts about it and this is one of the most difficult QT games I've played Either you have to have very good memorization skills but certain parts of the game will kind of uh, make you want to pull your hair out. Um, stage 2 when you're trying to get past the bridge for example or uh, on stage 3 when you have to uh, speed up to, in order to get the guy off the car. Anyway, um, we're going to go through the first stage of this game just to give you some idea about what to expect from it because it's the easiest stage and it's one stage that I can pass without any hiccups. And then um, afterwards you guys can get a better idea of what this game's like and whether or not it's worth to actually import it. So anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and push on to the option menus, and I'm going to change some of the options that you guys can see here in a few seconds. Now the options in this game allow you to switch between the PlayStation and version of the arcade version. I'm going to obviously switch to the arcade version and put um, Auto Neutral on. It, this, what, when doing this, it also changes the uh, start screen to a kind of a green icon opposed to the original silver icon. And stage one is revenge. All right. Now, again, this is one of the hardest QT games I've actually played, but probably the best QT game I've played, and it's definitely worth the import. So, um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is shut up, so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm talking about, and we'll watch it all the way through. Now, the uh, price tag of this game is a bit high. Uh, well, it's not that high, it's within reason. Uh, you can pick it up anywhere from $14 up to $50, depending on where you buy it from. And it comes in a two packet, it comes in a two game package. Um, I don't remember the name of the other game that caught me. I think it's called Thunder Force or Thunder Raiders or something like that. And then this one, Road Blaster. And uh, it's for the Sega CD, for the original version, it looks a bit grainier than this one. And Sega Saturn plus the PlayStation. You're seeing the PlayStation 1 version of this game played through PS3. And if you have the original uh, CDI, you can also pick it up for that.
Ah, and I almost forgot. The best version of this game is actually the laser active version. For those of you who own a laser active, you know what I'm talking about. Pitch quality is superb. So here we're almost at the end of this stage now. And You've gotten a good idea of what I've been talking about in terms of the quality of the actual animation and how fun this PT can be. Again, it's a lot of memorization, but once you get it, the payoff is great. It's one of those games that you can literally go back to now and again and play and enjoy every single time you do. And it, towards, I'll say this right off the bat, I beat this game on the Sega CD. I haven't gotten that far on the PlayStation 1 version, but I'll tell you, once if you can make it to the final stage, it's wicked. And it, every time you um, go to a different stage, the animation seems to, you know, you just see the quality seems to go. The quality seems to go up. Anyway, that's the end of this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it.